Good afternoon and welcome to this week's session of Midweek Money Matters. My name is Katrina Boyer and I'm the Investor Education Coordinator at the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities and I'm so happy to have you here with us today. We are recording today's session so I ask that you remain muted throughout the presentation. If you have questions during, you can place them in the chat box. Otherwise, we'll have time at the end. I'll go ahead and stop the recording and invite you to unmute yourself if you have questions you'd like to ask live. So without further ado, we are talking about the investment frauds that we need to know. And the reality is that there are many, many different investment scams and frauds out there. The reality is they're kind of a dime a dozen. We talk about Ponzi schemes, affinity fraud, those free lunch um, scams. We talk about those all the time, but the reality is there's a whole lot of other types of scams that involve investments that we need to be aware of. Today, we're gonna talk about three that all start with the letter P. So we're gonna start with pump and dump scams. We've heard a lot about those recently. We're also going to talk about promissory note scams and prime bank investment schemes. And then I'll wrap it up with some of the common red flags of investment scams that we see pretty frequently. Um, as we talk about the different types of scams, you'll see that there are some red flags and some indications, warnings that kind of overlap each other because the reality is that a lot of scams really are just little tweaks on other scams. So that's something that we want to keep in mind so that we keep always thinking about what we know about scams as far as if it sounds too good to be true, if it promises a huge rate of return, all of those types of things. But first I want to talk about the pump and dump scam because I think that one is the easiest one to kind of wrap your head around. So basically what happens is when we increase the value of a stock and then we dump the stock when the price is up. But how does that really work? So if I have a, a bunch of stock in ABC Corner Liquor Store and I want to, to do or um, to participate in a pump and dump scam, what I'm likely to do is I'm likely to go on social media, maybe I start making some random calls, and I say things like, hey, ABC Liquor Store has just bought out, you know, 15 different other markets, and their price, the value of their stock is just about to skyrocket. Or the company down the street, the bicycle company has a brand new sort of life-changing bike that they're going to be releasing. And because of that, the value of the stock is going to increase. So you don't want to miss out on this opportunity. So what happens is then people start to share that in their communities and the stock price goes way up because lots of people want to buy stock in whatever company they think is about to skyrocket. And what happens is when all the people buy the stock, the stock does go up, but it only goes up a small amount. And as soon as the original stockholder, the person who is sort of committing the scam, sees the price increase, he sells off all his stock. He makes a killing and the stock resumes back to its normal, very low cost or even lower cost than it was worth when the scam started. So I think it's important that we understand that, you know, we've seen the ebb and flow of the stock market. If we've watched any form of TV or read newspapers, we're seeing, you know, the, the articles online. The reality is initial stockholders sell off that inflated price and they make that great big prom profit. Now, we should know that pump and dump scams typically involve what we call small cap companies or small capital companies. These are companies that don't have a lot of big money. They're often found on the internet. You can see them a lot through social media. Sometimes if the criminal has access 
they may uh, create a, a call where it sounds like it's somebody calling to leave a very important message for somebody else. So maybe I'll say, hey, Joe, this is, this is Katrina, and I just wanted to share with you this, this stock tip. There's a really great opportunity that you don't want to miss out. So I leave this random message on whatever phone numbers, and then when those people hear the message, they're enticed to check out this stock opportunity that this random person left on their voicemail. And what they don't realize is that it's a scam. So what are the red flags of a pump and dump scam? So it's often an unsolicited investment opportunity. Again, whether it comes by mail, email, phone call, or even on social media. If you're not looking to buy a stock and you find out about something random, it's important that you check it out. Another red flag that we need to be aware of for pump and dumps is if it's too good to be true. What's the likelihood that the corner liquor store down the street is buying out a whole bunch of other liquor stores. If it sounds too good to be true, again, it probably is. And the other red flag that we need to be concerned about is that these are, again, typically very small companies, one that we may not know much about, one that doesn't have a big long history, or there may not be a lot of public information available. Now, one thing we do have to understand is that the pump and dump scam does involve legitimate shares of stock. Where it comes into being the scam is when someone else from the outside makes all these claims, and then when the price increases, the value of the stock increases, that person sells, which causes the, the, mark, the stock's value to plummet again. All right, so let's move on to promissory notes. A promissory note is a promise to repay. It's kind of like an IOU. Maybe a business person that you meet through a community event introduces you to this really cool investment opportunity. And then he tells you all about this company that's looking to expand, but they may not have the wherewithal to raise the funds, or maybe they want to, they claim that they want to make it available to people, to the general public. But then they're going to turn that around and they're going to say that these types of loans are only um, available to certain people. Now, one thing that's important for us to understand is there are promissory note investments that are legitimate, but the real notes are only offered to institutional investors or what are considered sophisticated investors. And they actually have to have had, they have to have a minimum net worth or they have to have a, a minimum in amount of money coming in. Their, you know, their income, their annual income is really high or they have significant experience in investing. So when this person comes to you and tells you about this promissory note opportunity, they're going to tell you that it's going to have a maturity very soon within typically nine months. But um, they're also going to tell you that the rate of return is much higher. So they may tell you that it's offering a 20 to 30 percent return on your investments. The problem is there may not even be a company. So we need to know that legitimate promissory notes are considered a security and they have to be registered with the S Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, whether they are, ha they have to be um, registered as something that's available for investors to invest in or whether it's registered as a, a company that's exempt from having to register it still has to be registered in one way or another. The other thing is the seller, the person who's selling off those, um, those promissory notes has to, be a, has to be licensed to sell securities. So both pieces to this equation have to be legitimate and we have the ability to check that. 
So at the end of today's presentation, I'm actually going to provide you with those resources. But it's really important that we know that the securities are never considered risk free, guaranteed or insured. There is always a risk associated with any kind of investment that you do. There's always the chance that the company won't be able to pay back the debt that they owe. There's always a chance that a company would lose its assets and go bankrupt. So we have to know that securities are never considered risk-free or guaranteed. Keep that in mind when someone is presenting you with information about a potential investment. So let's talk about the red flags of a promissory note scam. So that first red flag, they're gonna tell you that there is a guaranteed return. With any investment, including promissory notes that are available to those sophisticated investors, there's always a risk. Because what happens if the company borrows all this money and then maybe the market dries up for what they're trying to sell? So they can't make the profit that they were anticipating to be able to repay the borrower or the lenders. Another red flag is when, when the company talks about risk-free notes. Again, there's always a risk associated with, a, with um, an investment. And then another option, another thing that we need to be aware of is that promissory notes that are scams typically are shorter than one year. A traditional promissory note is typically a 12-month investment that you can roll over if you choose. The fraudulent ones are offered on a shorter term, so typically less than nine months. And they, again, they guarantee that rate of return that's much higher than a traditional investment that you may want to invest in. So if they're promising you a guaranteed return of 20 to 30%, those are huge red flags that we need to run away from this type of investment. Now, the next topic I want to talk about is called a prime bank investment fraud. That really is a very general term that um, refers that the, ski, the scam itself is, goes by many different names. This is a list that I found on the Office of Inspector General, the Federal Office of Inspector General's website. And I can provide you with these links so that you can check it out. But these schemes, the fraud artists claim to have access to a secret investing or trading program that's sanctioned by the Federal Reserve Bank, the US Department of Treasury, the World Bank, or even the International Chamber of Commerce. Sometimes they'll even claim that it's endorsed um, by the International Monetary Fund. The reality is that all of that is bogus. There is no such thing as a prime bank loan. It just doesn't happen. What they will claim is that these are only available to, to um, you know, big banks and things like that. The reality is that they just don't exist. You can learn more about these types of loans, um, these types of frauds rather, by again, checking out that, um, the link that's on the page. Understand that offering this type of loan is also against the law and it violates quite a few different federal laws that are actually um, crimes. So. Make sure that you understand when you start to hear about prime bank, whether it's high yield trading or a standby letter of credit, whatever story the criminals have come up with, make sure that you're aware that these types of loans simply don't exist. Um, so often the perpetrators will tell you that these types of loans are only available for the richest of the rich. But because they like you, 
they're going to let you in on the plan, on the, on the program. But if you tell anyone, you're going to be kicked out of the investment program and you won't get your money back. Or they'll go on to tell you that, um, again, it's those federal or international officials or governments that are backing these loans. Um, the reality is that federal and international officials do not endorse any form of investing. Investments are risky and no government is going to endorse something over another. So make sure that you keep that in mind. So let's talk about the red flags for a prime bank scam. So often the criminals will say um, that, you know, if you think about the most popular investor that you know, um, maybe it's Susie Orwin or maybe it is, um, you know, you name the person and they, it could be them. And they'll say that so-and-so is involved in this, in this prime bank loan, this prime bank investment. You don't want to miss out on this opportunity. Or they may say, this is such a complicated loan program or investment program that we don't really have any printed materials. Listen, any investment that you take, any investment that you make has to have information printed out for you to read so you understand what you're getting into. So make sure that you keep that in mind when you are considering investing. And again, a promise of a very high return on your investment with a guarantee that it's not going to lose. Those are all red flags of not only prime bank scams, but other types of scams as well. So, I wanna talk just a little bit about some of the common red flags that we see when we talk about investment scams. And um, keep in mind that if an offer is too good to be true, it's probably a scam. My mom said that to me when I was a kid and I had no idea exactly how, um, how smart my mom really was. So another thing that we can look at as a red flag is that if there are higher rates of return for this product than anything else that's happening. So we know traditionally that investments, um, like if you invest in the stock market, the average rate of return is somewhere between six and 10% annually. So if someone comes to you and says, hey, I have this investment opportunity that's guaranteed to give you a 15% rate of return. That is much higher than anywhere else. And again, that guarantee, there's nothing guaranteed in the investing world. We've seen it time and time again. Another thing that is a red flag is Everyone is doing this. This is such a great opportunity. All of your neighbors are getting involved in it. All the people that you that you meet with on the basketball court or in the golf club, whatever it is, they're, you know, they want you to give, they want to give you that fear of missing out. So you want to make sure that you keep that in mind. Or if someone tells you that if you don't invest right now, tomorrow is going to be too late. Um, there are no investments that are worth that kind of risk. Or if someone asks you to invest in this market or invest in this fund, but they want you to pay via gift card or wire transfer or cash, any of those non-traditional ways of paying for something also need to be a red flag. I'm always amazed when I hear someone say, well, I was going to make this investment, but they had to have an iTunes gift card. Now, what I want to know is, how is the investment company going to turn that iTunes gift card into cash without losing part of the investment? So make sure that you think about those types of things as well. But I also want to talk about the importance of speaking up. If you or someone that you know 
has become a victim of an investment fraud or scam, like the ones that we just talked about, promissory notes, um, prime bank investments, pump and dump, um, whether it is a precious metal scam or even you know, fake certificates of deposits, fake CDs or invest other types of investments. It's important that you report it to the appropriate authorities. The Securities and Exchange Commission is probably the best one to report that to, but I always encourage individuals to report it to their local state regulator as well, because the reality is, if we don't know about a problem, there's nothing that can be done to investigate it and then bring it to a stop. So reporting to the Pennsylvania Department of Banking and Securities is another really important step in being able to put an end to the criminal activity. So here's the contact information for my office, the Department of Banking and Securities, and the Securities and Exchange Commission at sec.gov. Um, but did you know that all of the offerings, all of the opportunities that I talked about that are legitimate, so investing in stock, um, you know, investing in promissory notes, it's important that you know that you can verify that investment is legitimate. You can actually go to the SEC's website. They have the Electronic Data Gathering Analysis and Retrieval Database. It's commonly referred to as the EDGAR database. And basically what you do is you put the information in there. You can put in, type in the name of the company that you're considering investing in, and it's going to give you so much information about the type of company they are, what's the, what is the financial health that they're in? Do they have enough assets? Have they been in business very long? All of that kind of information can really help you to make an informed decision on what type of investments you want to make. So in, but before you decide to buy that stock that you think is going to explode, check it out on Edgar and make sure that what's being offered kind of makes sense or the value of that stock at that time makes sense as well. So the other thing that we want to remember is that if we check Edgar to check the investment opportunity, we want to also check the investment professional because so we can't buy an investment from some random guy off the street, right? They have to have a license to either be, um, they ha if they're buying and selling stock for you, they actually have to have a license as a broker or a broker dealer. And you can go into BrokerCheck at brokercheck.finra.org and type in that person's name and make sure that they actually can legally do what they're asking you to do. Because you don't want to give that information to someone who's not licensed. So if you've ever participated in our Midweek Money Matters before, I always try to provide additional resources because 30 minutes is not a very long time for me to be able to provide information. So the idea is to give you enough information that you have a general understanding, but more importantly, to have you want to learn more. And so you can actually go to the Securities and Exchange Commission's website for investors at investor.gov. They have so many great articles and videos and different things that you can do. They've got some um, calculators that you can play around with. It's a great way to get your feet wet and really start to learn more about investing. BrokerCheck is the site that I, that I provided as far as being able to search for licensed investment professionals. And then the, a new website I want to share today is called InvestRight. It is spelled out investright.org, and that is um, a great website from a regulator that's involved with NASA, the North American Securities Administrators Association. But I find this website to be very useful and interactive, and it provides, it actually, I, I got a lot of information about today's 
scams that we talked about. So I would encourage you to check out investright.org as well. As always, our consumer services staff are available during regular business hours. If you have questions about an investment opportunity or an investment professional that you're considering working with, you can call our office at 1-800-PA-BANKS where a real life person will answer your call and provide you with the information that you need, whether it's helping you understand what's being offered to you, whether it is helping you to verify the legitimacy of an investment or the legitimacy of an investment professional. Those are all um, questions that you can ask in addition to asking about whether the financial institution that you're working with is um, chartered by the department, whether the check cashing store or the money transmitter or the car dealership that you're working with has a license to do business in their commonwealth. All of the services that we offer are free. And as I said, if you call during regular business hours, your chances of getting a live person are pretty big. Otherwise, you might have to leave a message and someone will return your call as soon as a line is available. So make sure that you keep that in mind. I do want to tell you about our how-to series. We are quickly approaching our 100th episode of Midweek Money Matters. And so we're sort of doing this do-it-yourself how-to series for the month of August. Next week, we're covering how to hire a professional. So we'll talk about the different types of professionals that are available. We're gonna tell, we're gonna kind of go a little bit more deeply into what Broker Check does, we're gonna talk about some questions and the interview process that we want to use when we decide to hire an investment professional to help us with, to help us reach our financial goals. So you don't wanna miss that. Our 100th episode or session of Midweek Money Matters is actually on August 18th. And for that one, we're, the how-to is going to be, how do I learn more about saving, investing, and protecting my assets? independently. So you don't want to miss um, our August series. I'm super excited about that. And you can go to our Eventbrite registration page at padobs.eventbrite.com and you can register for those. I do have all of the events for August set up now. So you can go ahead and go over there and register. My name is Katrina Boyer. I do want to thank you so much for your time today. It has been my pleasure sharing information about investment scams, pump and dump, promissory note, and prime bank scams today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording now. If anyone has any questions or comments,